day before the storm, I don't think there's a New Yorker, including even Mayor Bloomberg, that actually thought it would be this bad. We were actually right here, and it was getting around dusk. And we watched it get worse and worse, but nothing dramatic. Our neighbor, Simon the musician, he said, oh, I'm gonna go check the waves and see how it's going down at the boardwalk. Ooh. And we were watching that transformer zap out. Right. And we're like, oh, there goes power. And Simon comes busting in the gate and running by, and he's like, it's on. And all I saw behind him, like up to his ankles, is water rushing in behind him. And he's yeah. like, you guys, it's coming. This is my house that's destroyed from the storm, Sandy. This is my house at Beach 87th Street here in Rockaway Beach, New York. It is 34 days after Hurricane Sandy came and took half of my house, more than half of my house at this point. Uh, well, I'm from Hawaii, from the Big Island of Hawaii, Keokaha. I didn't even know there were waves here or anything. We were able to pay for our mortgage and live at the beach, but still be in New York City. It originally moved here for the waves. Now it's a really tight community of friends, and that's why you live here. The break has gotten more and more crowded year after year. You suddenly have a lot of novices coming out, and a lot of them are coming from Brooklyn, and they're coming from Williamsburg, and you know, it's this whole sort of, oh, that, uh, them versus us, and people that live here versus the people that are coming in. And I think there's a certain level of animosity, but I think some of the homeowners, like myself, also saw that as like, the a change in the neighborhood, like a shot in the arm. The city was now finally taking notice of the Rockways and wanting to fix it up. Last year, I think they estimated that 3.4 million people came out to the beach, and this year it was 7.1 million people came out to the beach. Four days out from when the storm hit us, they were already talking about it merging with the coal front coming across us and doing something freaky and getting getting heavy, you know. As the storm came, we were on Beth and Kim's porch and Simon came back down the street and said, guys, the shit has hit the fan. It went from, oh, there's a foot of water to, wow, it's at the top of the steps. We just started moving our stuff over to Scott and Lois's here. But it's a higher house and they have an upstairs. With the foot here, this room. And we started realizing, oh gosh, their first floor is done. And then we saw two neighbors across the road. And they called to me and they said that they were worried for their life, that, they were, that the one guy couldn't swim and if they asked if they could come over to the house. And so, so we took them in. So we took them in, we brought them across. By then the whole house is shaking. The refrigerator, everything is just floating, couches around. You know, you heard crashing, things crashing and breaking. The siding started coming off and just slapping up against the back of their window. The water was four feet here, and I look outside as the light hits our backyard, and I realize the water is about another foot and a half above that outside. That's when I first saw the water like squirting through the side of the door and could see the, how much all of these big glass windows were just bowed in. And everyone w was worried, you know, and we were definitely concerned about the house holding up and, and uh, the choices that we had made, whether, you know, that we stayed to, to be in this. And, you know, there was a mandatory evacuation and we didn't heed the warning of it. I thought, okay, the water's gonna come up and it's gonna really suck and we're gonna be uncomfortable, and then it's gonna go away. And then we're gonna clean it up and it'll be fine. I never really understood the kind of damage that the water was gonna create. The 
The next morning, when we looked down here, the water was still, you know, floorboard wise. It was there until about 11. And the whole house was filled with this weird condensation, so it was like being in a tropical forest of rain. Then we realized how thick the layer of human shit was on the floor. All my photos, like my personal art photo, you know, family photos, albums just that I had in the tub had floated up, tumped over, opened up. I think it was the day after it was the first time we went down to the boardwalk. The devastation was so overwhelming for me that I just, that, that's when I was really like just crushed and felt like, just let's get out of here. What are we doing here? Why rebuild? first five days, you're running on pure adrenaline. You don't care who you offend, you don't care how you talk to people. You know, it could be your best friend, and you're like, okay, go get that blue tub, bring it over here, do this, walk and talk with me. You're running on adrenaline. And then, after a while, after, okay, I've done everything I can do to my house, you're like, ugh. And then you start picking through the little things. Everything is covered in that sewage water. We came to the realization that we were going to lose pretty much everything. It's, it's, uh, it was painful. It was, it was humbling. It was yeah. so humbling for all yeah. of us in realizing, like, I can't do this by myself. Friends of mine. All of them who surf, who know me from surfing, came out to help. All I saw was all those same surfers that were coming in from Williamsburg or outside, they came in and they saved our butts. And between the volunteers and Team Rubicon, ripping up the floor and the drywall is the only reason we have this house. The surfing community, I mean, it's sort of like a family, you know. When something like this happens, all the little uh, meaningless squabbles kind of get put aside and people step up and, and really show the, the better side of humanity, I feel, you know, like the real, you know, aloha, real true aloha. There was another storm that hit the week, a week after a, a nor'easter hit us. Walking down the beach, I, I felt guilty going surfing. You know, you're walking by people and looking at their faces and, you know, they, they didn't even have to say anything. Just looking, looking in their eyes, you can tell that they were like, oh, well, you know, there's like work to be done and this guy's going surfing. But I did need to go surfing because it's, you know, as a surfer, you know, like it's part of our lives. And for me, it's a little bit of normalcy that I get back to that where I can get out there and get exercise and get a couple nice ones and feel uh, a little normal again and kind of rinse the whole storm off me, you know? And then you realize you were also surfing with a lot of the guys who had helped. Yeah, I got just in my backyard ripping out my drywall. This way it's yours to, to take it. A lot of the local guys here are like pretty grateful. We, we will definitely remember who to be grateful. out at the waves, you, you can barely see the destruction. And then, then the walk back is, of course, back to the grim reality of it. The way to keep mold off, off of your things is 
you know, block off the area, turn, block off all your vent, keep your window shut, and put it all in sealed bags. You know, we had a sink, cabinets, cabinets, and then this is our stove, and this is our refrigerator. It costs thirteen thousand dollars for mold removal. Twenty-two thousand to reside the house. The drywall between eighteen to twenty thousand. Flooring, which is going to be in probably about eight thousand. We'll call it seven thousand to make it simple. So we're up to sixty thousand, and we still don't have any kitchen, bedroom, or appliances. So for this house, between fifty and sixty thousand. If I had to make a total throw a dart at the dartboard guess, I would guess about 150 grand. We're your typical middle class New Yorkers, and I don't know how we're gonna pay it fix our home. If I was on a fixed income already, I have had no idea how this would ever get fixed. The FEMA won't cover it. Bloomberg is certainly not gonna cover it. Hot me on blankets, not gonna put your house back up. It's just um, sort of an overwhelming feeling of depression and frustration that you just get used to living with. You're just like, nothing I can do about it. So keep moving on and find every little detail you can attend to. The whole experience has humbled me and, and, and it's, it breaks you down, you know. I've experienced deaths and sicknesses within my family and can't buy back somebody's life or, you know, there's, there's things that aren't fixable and this is fixable for us. And it's a huge hassle and it's emotional, but, um, you know, we're going to build it back. It's an unusual situation where we might actually have the funding and the knowledge and the opportunity to say, this is problematic. We have an opportunity now to fix it. And hopefully the city will listen and they'll, and they'll take it the right direction. New York, Bloomberg, the U.S. government overall needs to take a look at what Rockaway is. Rockaway is a gem of a place right next to the biggest city in the world. I don't think in any way that it, it has changed like the tight-knit community other than made us tighter. Because um, I don't know of anyone that, you know, didn't help out, didn't help out each other. This is why we stay. I mean, it's why we moved here because there's the people here are, it's, it's a community like I've never been in, in before in my life. The New York surfer is a different breed, I think, and they've made it a place that you'd want to live at, you know, a place that you, that you feel a part of and you, you're connected to this, this group, you know, people that are like-minded and want to surf and enjoy the beach. I, I think that the surf community will definitely, it, it took a hard shot in the face. You know, in Rockaway, we're hard to kill, man, and we're, we're, not, <laughs> we're, not, we're, not, we're not staying down. You know, we're gonna, we're gonna get up, and we're gonna shake, shake our pants off, shake yeah. our shirt off, and everybody's gonna band together and rebuild. Na, 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 na,